What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how you can create REST API using AWS services. But before going into the mechanics of creating one, I wanted to briefly explain what exactly is a REST API and why it is so popular in web applications. To explain that, let me show you a real life example of REST API and how it is used. So this is a website which I created like three years ago uh, to get info on stocks. But more importantly, this website uses a lot of APIs internally. For example, if I click on get started uh, and let's say I click on stock 360 analysis from the drop down, if I select any of the stock, let's say, let's select SBI and click submit. So what it does is in the back end is basically it triggers a REST API. Uh, and it pass on the stock symbol, which is SBIN in this case, and it fetches all the information related to the stock. And it, then it simply shows on the web application. So just like this, we can use multiple APIs in a website to get and post information. Actually, let me give you another example. So we all know Amazon website. Basically in Amazon.ca or Amazon.com, it triggers a bunch of APIs every time when we try to search for any product. Let's say I'm searching for seed. In the backend, it does trigger API, uh, which fetch me all these information. So let me show you a diagram, which simplifies what we understood so far. So again, imagine we have a website application. In this case, as an example, I use this website, but it can be any website. It can be your personal website. And whenever you try to search for any customer information or any stock related information or product, it would trigger a REST API, which in the backend goes to the server, fetches the request from a database, and then show it on your web application. It can be other way around as well. You can also post any information wherein you would submit a form, let's say, uh, with your name, address, phone number. You can post that information and it would go and would be saved into a database. So now the question comes how to create one. AWS is a cloud platform which allows us to use a lot of different services such as database, serverless functions, etc. If you are not familiar with AWS, I'll post a link somewhere on the screen. You can check my other video, which explains a little about AWS ecosystem. But for this example, we'll use API Gateway, which will allow us to create REST API. So once you log into your AWS console, which would look similar to this, you can go to the services and it is under networking and content delivery and this is your service api gateway but you can also simply search from the search bar as you can see i have two apis created already but for this video i'll create another one so i'll click on create api now you can see there are a lot of different options http api websocket api but for this video we'll stick with rest api and i'll click on build now I'll give a name and a description. For the endpoint type, we can keep regional and we'll click on create API. Now, once we create an API, there are a lot of different options such as resources, stages, authorizers. But again, for this video, we'll just focus on creating one API. So in the resources section, if you click on actions, you can see you can create method, you can create resources. So what does a resource mean? So you can have a URL and then there could be specific resources on which you want to point your URL at. For example, let's say I create a re resource name as customer and I can create this resource. Now I can have another resource as product and I can have another resource as order. So by having different kind of resources in my API, it allows me to segregate all my different incoming requests. I can have a customer specific URL, I can have an order specific and similar for product. Now, once we have these different resources, we need to create methods. In, in a REST API world, a method is basically how you want to invoke your API. So for customer, I can have these different options. I can have any, delete, get, uh, post, put, patch. The most popular ones are get, post and put. 
So get helps you to fetch any sort of information from your database or any any storage and post helps you to save any kind of information. For example, you can have an image which you want to store in S3 or somewhere in a server. So for this video again, I'll select get. Now, what kind of integration would you like? So as I mentioned before in this diagram, uh, once you invoke a REST API, uh, there would be some kind of a server application which would allow your REST API to communicate with different services. You have different options here as well in AWS. You can select any of the AWS services. So there are a lot of AWS services which has good integrations with API Gateway. But in this use case, I'll stick with Lambda function, which is nothing but my serverless application. So Lambda would replace this web server in this example. And then I would need a Lambda proxy integration for this API to work with Lambda. And then I have to give my Lambda function name. So as of now, we don't have a Lambda function. So let's go ahead and create one. So let's go to the Lambda console and click on create function. Now I can give any name to this. Uh, we would select Python 3.8. So if you are using Lambda for the first time, you can you can leave this as a default, which will create a new role for your Lambda. But I have already an IAM role for Lambda. So I'll just select that one and I'll click create function. Cool. So as of now, we will not change anything. But the idea is once this API gets triggered, uh, this Lambda function would invoke. Uh, for testing purposes, I'll just click on test. I'll give an event name. Let's say this is test event and click save and I'll click test. So once this API invokes this Lambda function, uh, I should receive this response, uh, like response code 200 and the message should be hello from Lambda. Again, just to make everything clear, uh, this web server is basically our Lambda function. So that's what we are doing as of now. Now I can go ahead and I can uh, refresh page and lambda. here is our lambda function and click save so now it is giving us a prompt that you are about to give api gateway permission to invoke your lambda function which is absolutely fine that's what we want let's click on test we don't need to fill out anything as of now and here we receive hello from Lambda once we do this testing with a status code 200. This looks perfect. Let's deploy this so we can go ahead. So we will go in actions, click on deploy API. We don't have a deployment stage as of now. So let's create one. I'll name this as testing and click on. So this is the URL. I'll copy this and I'll open Postman. So Postman is a very popular application which helps you to work with your API for testing purposes and a lot of different integrations it has. So in the Postman, I'll paste the URL. Uh, the method is get, but you can again select different. But for this use case, we only have a get method and I'll click on send. And here you can see hello from Lambda. So this is working perfectly fine. So once we invoke this URL. This actually goes here and invoke this Lambda function. So this is what we wanted to do. But let's make it a little more fun. Now, I mentioned earlier that you can pass on different. If I go to this example again, you can pass on different information like stock name, customer name, product name, all those things. So how do you work along with that? So what you can do is in your URL, you can basically pass on information and then handle at your Lambda or handle at your server. Now how to do that? Let's again go to Lambda. So as you can see, this is simple Python. You can see this is uh, a function Lambda handler and there are two arguments even in context. And we can actually use this even parameter. And how we can do that? Let's say, let's create a variable as even body. And whenever there is an invocation for the URL, I get in certain information in my event 
parameter and the way how I can fetch it is through this key so query string parameter basically gets all my information from the URL whatever has been passed whenever there is an invocation to see it let's just simply copy this and replace it with this string and click on deploy so this is successfully deployed so if I go to postman and I pass name as Anand and click on send so I can see here that the API has given me a response with name as Anand and if I change this name with Priya and click on send again I can see here this is the response so now let's go to our lambda function again as we know that this key will remain constant every time for us I can change this as customer name and I can deploy this and now if I click on send I receive only Priya name so the reason we do this is because once we pass any information from the API we can use this in our lambda function and we can do certain operations with it let's for example let's say I am filling out a form from a web application and I want to save the name address phone number and all those sort of things so what I can do is I can create a simple query uh, let's say select star from cus table where cus name equals cus name and then I can once I can make connections with the database I can run certain queries I can fetch information I can save information in my database and I can do a lot of different operations within this lambda function now so this was just a very brief introduction how you can create a rest api using aws services and by the way this is i won't say it's absolutely free but i have been using this from past six months now uh, in my as i have shown you i have certain websites i have mobile applications and i have been using uh, api gateway and lambda functions a lot in all those applications I and i haven't incurred any cost as of now probably i am still staying in the limit within the free tier uh, but yeah definitely if you want to explore this I can assure you it's it's going to be probably free for you as you would not be building a very sophisticated complicated high traffic application for yourself but just for learning purposes you, you can definitely uh, create an AWS account you can definitely play around with all these services and see for yourself how these works for you I hope this was helpful for you guys if you have any kind of questions please feel free to comment down below uh, any any sort of questions or any different uh, resources or methods or integrations within this lambda function you would like to see comment down below and i would definitely create another video for you guys thanks a lot for watching bye bye for now